Hey everybody, Patrick Connor here, and welcome to the Knuckles and Gloves podcast. It's on the wake of a big boxing weekend. Got a lot of boxing to talk about, got a lot of stuff to recap, so I'm here with my dude Aris Pina, CompuBox operator, fellow fight, absolute monster. What's up, dude? How's it going? And everything, my friend. Doing all right, man. How'd, how'd, the, how'd that show go the other night with the, look like, dude, it was a banger, long-ass show on Showtime. Uh, oh, well, sorry, Fox. Yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. not Showtime. Fox. Fox. Yeah, man, that was a good show, dude. We, uh, I mean, at first we got to enjoy the um, the women's card, which was we'll, we'll bring that up in a moment, and that was pretty exciting in itself, considering you know the outcomes and the dramatics of it. So I was, you know, pretty hyped up to to start working the Fox show, and it was a long night. I mean, started working at seven because we worked uh, the prelims as well. So. Yeah, start from seven, go all the way till when it end, like a little after midnight in East Coast time over here. So, um, yeah, Deontay Wilder made sure it was a, a shorter night than it was gonna be. But I mean, it, at first, I was like, oh no, it's gonna be a long night for the East Coasters. Nah, man, and that's the thing. So let's, I guess, start off with that if you want, right? You know, if we're gonna do this recap, Wilder's back, and not only is Wilder back, my God, man, you know, he just solidified again what makes him so exciting. And not only in the heavyweight division, but just in boxing in general. He's boxing's biggest puncher. Um, he's one of boxing history's biggest puncher. Um, you can make a case <laughs> for him being the biggest heavy punching heavyweight ever now. I oh, mean, he just made so many people so mad. So mad. It's the truth, man. Fuck what you want to hear about that. And you you can bring up and say, oh, well, he's technically awful. Or he's yada, yada, yada. And so-and-so would have whooped his ass. But who cares? All right. He, it doesn't matter when you have an eraser like that and what Wilder does it works for him everybody's in their own era you know what I mean and he doesn't have to be a technical marvel to to lay guys out the way he does and for you to you know for others to say like he's never improved or anything if we've talked about on the show before man if you look from where he came early his career as a wild uncoordinated maniac to the, who the guy is now in his mid-30s and how he's like really slow you know from the cheap from the um <clears throat> from the training of Mark Breland to what he's done now with Malik Scott, like clearly he's a different fighter. Is he still a little wild? Yes. Is he still, a, you know, kind of uncoordinated and wonky? Yes, but that's him. It works for him though. He's quick twisted. He throws, you know, any angle he throws, it can be unorthodox. He's just going to knock the hell out of you. And he doesn't need it. Like I said, he doesn't need to be technically, uh, technically proficient to knock you out with one punch. Like he doesn't even have to throw it full force. He didn't even throw it full force on Plainness. You know, that's the that's the crazy part of it. What makes him so scary, he was moving off the back foot. He just looked like he just kind of, you know, I mean, there was force behind him, but just like, you know, clearly he didn't even put full extension and his ow, those eyes, bro, just. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's it's really difficult to <clears throat> get a get a, like a solid technical assessment. Look, we already know what Wilder looks like overall in terms of style and in terms of technique and skills. For the most part, we don't really need too much more information apart from how much he's improved. And it's tough to get that information in a round or less than a round. Um, I thought he looked pretty good overall. He looked like he was clearly working on his movement. He had clearly been working on uh, jabbing and using angles and stuff like that. It's, that stuff takes time. And he's not a young fighter. And the old saying, you know, old dogs can't learn new tricks and wank wank but you know fucking he's obviously developing somewhat clearly he's not the most technically proficient fighter who ever lived but at the same time the flip side of that uh in my opinion is that he act in some ways that actually works in his favor in some ways the poor technique it's like awkward the way that he delivers punches sometimes is weird and you don't expect them from that angle. And then on top of that, his reach is like fucking insane. And so then you can get nailed with punches that are massive. And if he catches you right at the end of them, dude, you're probably going to sleep. Yes. And so it, sometimes that lack of technique, the lack of skills or whatever, it sounds illogical. It sounds like some, it would be oxymoronic. Like how would that, how does that work? How does this, how does the fact that he's bad mean he's good? styles do make fights dude and it does uh i mean i guess to break it down slightly when you're a fighter and you're used to seeing punches thrown at you the same way generally <laughs> speaking you know like 90 percent of the time but then all of a sudden somebody's throwing punches from angles that you just don't usually see that can throw you off and then Absolutely. on top of that their footwork's wonky it's not going by the book and you're just like what the fuck 
bottom line is that, you know, he's either knocked out or knocked down every single fighter he's ever faced. I think he's only gone to decision what once, like, a, and, and one, I think. So Stavern. it's like. And look what he did to Stavern in that rematch. I was at the Barclays for that fight. Oh my, dude, that's like one of the most, even now, a couple times, I, I want to say like once or twice, I've posted that photo with the boxing history thing. And people oh, when he just laid back, you know. People are like, whoa, that's a little too much. I'm like, dude, I'm like just posting. just turned into like a giant piece of taffy and just bent over like a slinky. Like, dude, I'm like posting gore and cuts and people are like, yeah. And then I fucking post that photo and they're like, ugh, whoa. I think you that's not? what that's like the third of that's like the third first round knockout wilder score, scored at Barclays or something. Dude, it's I have no idea. He's 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 a nut. Um, dude, that was just like yeah, yeah that's all it takes is just one punch from him, and it doesn't even have to be the hardest punch, and that's what makes him so fascinating. That he doesn't have so to exciting. be Muhammad Ali, dude. It's okay oh. that he's not. You know, <laughs> like calm down, old timers. I mean, it makes it better with the type of power that he has. That he's not, man. The fact that he has all these technical, you know, um deficiencies makes it even better and more exciting as a fighter i think because he can get outboxed he does lose rounds a lot you know he's not very active he can't get hurt and but everything you know it's always like a fight that you need to watch with wilder because something dramatic is going to happen either he's going to spray splay out his opponent which chances are is going to happen or he's going to get hurt at some point and you know he's shown to have good recuperative powers himself even in the fury fights um, look at the punishment he took in both of them, and it took a while before Fury was able to take him out. And especially in the third fight, every time it looked like Wilder was really going to be out, like in the first time he got dropped, and then Fury was bullying him. And all of a sudden, the next round, you know, when Fury comes in, Wilder hits him with that right hand. You see all of Fury's body fat just jiggle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, he just turned into a bowl of jello like instantaneously, <laughs> dude. That shit was great. Fury has a head like King Kong Bundy, right? And you know, he even ball. tried to play it off for like a quick second. He was just like, hey, ooh. Like had to Fury sit just has one down. Of those, you know, Fury with the bald head has that big egg head, like old, you know, King Kong Bundy. That's the 80s reference, wrestler reference of, yep. of the show. And Wilder bounces off of that. So you see his head just cringe a little bit. Then you saw all the body fat just when a slow boat like a like a lava lamp. <laughs> <laughs> it was like the Simpsons episode where the Dr. Hibbard's like, you know, yeah, yeah, and it just keeps the, going. And he was running and they're like, why do you have him doing this? He's like, I don't know. I thought you just need to lose some weight. <laughs> um, but that's that's the beauty of it. And Wilder, because of that power, would have been competitive in any era in history. Would he have been as dominant? Probably not. I mean, the 70s were a whole different level, the 90s, whatever it is, but he would have been a factor in all of them. And everybody... Um, out there that would say, oh, he would get torn apart or whatever. Against maybe those, some of those guys, maybe so. But I guarantee you some of those heavyweights too, that if Wilder touched them, they would have been put to sleep immediately as well. So, I mean, it's just, it's good that he's back. All right. Like we weren't sure if he was going to come back after what happened in the third Fury fight um, mentally, especially because after the second fight, how he took that loss and he was going on with conspiracy theories. He had all these other things. He was broken. It was who knew, right? And so the third fight, he comes back put on the best performance I think out of all the fights out of all of them maybe and um came this close to winning it and then he lost again you're like oh you know how is he going to take that but it seems like he's come back he's doing mentally well you know what I like yeah. also is that he's not bulky anymore he's better I think leaned out you know the weight on him he got tired out by the Fury fight even though he tried to get bulky to compete with Fury and in theory Fury in theory um you would think that would work but while they're just his legs everything is just you know he's not He's not physically strong enough to compete with a guy that's a guy in massive like Fury who just knows how to use all that heaviness and stuff and just lean and all of that other crap and smother you. And it's tough, you know, it's tough. So yeah. it wears you out. And with Wilder's thin leg, you know, thin bottom frame, um, he did get worn out by that. So him coming in at what was it, like 214? Yeah, 214 and a half. Yeah, something around that, like, you know, it's just outweighed by fucking 40 pounds. And that can, tells you again, why do we need a bridge weight? Is that even still a thing? Bridge weight? Just, just yet another belt. The W, like we were talking about on the preview, just yet mm -hmm. another WBC belt that has gone fucking absolutely nowhere. But it shows it doesn't need to be there because even though Wilder mm -hmm. was a huge individual, he weighed 214. In theory, that's a small heavyweight, you know, compared to like a lot of these monsters that are out there weighing in the 240s, 250s and such. So, um... I don't know. It's 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 interesting, man. You got you have this look, and you think that uh, I'm. It's sorry. Hold on. I just lost my train of thought for a second. Um, 
with Wilder back in the division now, it's it gives back that that boost that it needed for excitement because he's the most exciting guy in the division, you know. And with his power, he's a player against any of those guys, even Fury if they had to have a fourth fight. But you know, I would love to see him against Usyk. I think that's one of the most fascinating fights on the planet because. As everybody's been saying on Twitter, a lot of people have been saying, oh, you know, Usyk, well, I'll box him easily, yada, yada, yada. I'm sure he would. But here's the Maybe. thing. Wilder just needs to touch him once. That's all he has to do. Luis Ortiz was out boxing him for all the majority of the rounds that they fought. Anytime Wilder finally touched him, though, Ortiz turned to Jello. Hell, Gerald Washington, of all people, was out boxing Wilder years ago when they fought, before he got caught. Like, Wilder doesn't need to be, you know, to, to win on points. He doesn't have to do all that type of stuff. He just needs to catch you. Usyk exactly. can be hit. Like, you know, and there's clips of like Joshua timing Usyk was, you know, with right hands that snapped his head back and were really powerful punches. And while they're landing those shots, I'm not sure how Usyk would react to that. In a few rounds, I thought Joshua did a really good job against Usyk in the in the second fight. There were a handful of sequences so. where he had kind of like gotten aggressive and he was uh, backing him up and, and timing a right hand really nicely. It was just he couldn't sustain it. And then Usyk also picked up on it like he... Mm -hmm picked up on AJ's adjustment and was like, no, and shut it down. And obviously that part of that's part of what Ole makes Alexander Usyk one of the best pound for pound fighters in the world and puts him on another level. However, like you said, dude, and like Wilder said, like a lot of people say, all of that sh stuff with one punch can mean nothing. All of the amateur experience, all of the, you know, unified cruiserweight and went on a terrific run, uh, and, you know, depending on how you feel about the Tyson Fury repeat retirement situation, some people uh, like the Transnational Boxing Ranking Board has pulled Tyson Fury and they have Alexander Usyk as their champion. Um, <clears throat> so and, and I mean, look, dude, I've, that's a whole different conversation, but it's kind of just like how many times are you going to let the guy say he's fucking retiring before you honor it? Like he's done it like fucking five times now. Mm -hmm. So, you know, point being uh Alexander Usyk's obviously on that level, but one shot from Deontay Wilder can change all that, dude. One shot, that's it. And obviously, we've seen Tyson Fury defeat him uh, two times, potentially, you know, three times. But it, it, I think that the counter for the easy counterpoint to that, if that, if the whole point in bringing that up, from what I've seen, has been like, yeah, you know, he punches hard, but so what? You know, as when you bring up his all time ranking and stuff like that, the best fighter, he fought him three times and couldn't beat him. And it's kind of like, so, like, I mean, you know, like, so what? Like, that uh, Joe Frazier defeated Muhammad Ali when they were prime, like, or at least close to prime and prime. And that, so what? It doesn't affect anything, really. So, any, and I'm obviously not trying to make an analogy like either of them is, is uh, Ali or Frazier, but the point being just that, like, it doesn't, that's not a shameful thing. So, what? Tyson Fury, Fury beat him twice. Like Tyson Fury is obviously the best heavyweight of this generation. There's nothing mm -hmm. to be ashamed of about that. And that doesn't mean that Deontay Wilder can't come back and carve out his own niche or work his way back toward redemption in a fourth fight or just whatever the fourth fight happens. You know, I mean, I, uh, to go to the kind of mental aspect that you were talking about, um, <clears throat> rather than Deontay Wilder kind of falling into that lurch after the Tyson Fury rematch that he seemed to fall into he it's almost as if that loss in the third fight to Tyson Fury he redeemed himself because he did what he felt I mean whatever twisted Mark Breland thing he had you know like I'm I'm not going to touch that but he seemed to work that out in the third fight mm -hmm. nobody stopped it he got brutally fucking beat down but he obviously gave everything he had, had and came really close to winning that fight. And, uh, you know, I think for him, that was about as good a redemption as he could get short of a win. And he's been oh. able to take that, turn it around, and sounds a lot more emotionally and mentally with it in terms of, like, you know, making what he's got going work for him right now. Um, so that's good to see. And it's good to hear that he's obviously in a much better place than he was for sure. Cause I was worried about the guy. Mm -hmm. I was worried about the guy. For sure, man. You know, uh, absolutely. After that last fight, after the third fury fight and how he reacted after the second one. Yeah. We all had every right to be really worried about it, but he seems to be in a good place. You know, um, the, the things that have been happening outside the ring for him, you know, with the statue being, 
made for, in his honor in his home state of uh, Alabama and the things that he's doing outside the ring and the influences he's making, you know, you can see that he's like coming full circle, I guess. And the division now there's the division's kind of open more for him too. Like there's other options. He doesn't have to just worry about Fury being the king and actually bringing up Fury. Here's a, here's a new window uh, that just kind of arisen now too, is because Fury was originally going to fight Usyk. That was the talk that was going to go on, but Fury being Fury started, you know, making a bunch of demands, started making all this other bullshit. And then he was like, yeah, I'm not going to wait until next year to fight him. And then, because I think Usyk also said like too. They like just fought, fought the other day and Tyson yeah. Fury's having a fucking tantrum that they like won't oh, bow yeah. to him. And then after that, he said he was going to fight Joshua. And we saw how that all that unfolded only for him to say he's going to fight now Jarek Chisora, which, you know, if you want to look at Fury being still as called a lineal heavyweight champion, I guess he is because he was the man who beat the man who beat the man. His reign as heavyweight champion is on par with George Foreman um, after he beat Michael Moore or even Riddick. And I'm not sure if this was so much Bo's, Bo's fault, but even so, Riddick Bo's uh, title reign when he was first champion, because people don't remember that. You know what I mean? You know, you remember Riddick Bo when he beat Iver in the Holyfield, one of the greatest fights ever. And you think of fights like that. But if, when you think about him, when if you think about his actual title reign, his two only defenses were against Jesse Ferguson and a completely coked out, washed up, just everything Michael Dokes. That was it, you know? Maybe had he beaten Holyfield in the rematch, he would have went on the more successful defense or something, but I'm not even sure after that because look at the fight, the fighters he fought soon after that. So there you go. Fury has a pathetic reign at this point. You know what I mean? And all the goofiness that he does, pulling all these stupid strings left and right. Oh, you don't want to fight me. I'm giving you a deadline for this. All this bullshit that he wants to go through. It just makes it even more pathetic, especially when he settles on fighting guys like Jasora. And no discredit to him. He's a fun guy. I've always enjoyed watching him, but he has no right being in there with Tyson Fury, especially after they fought <laughs> no. twice and he didn't win a round against him. So, like, what's the point? Yeah, I, I don't know what. Yeah, I don't know what they're. My initial thought, <clears throat> excuse me. My initial thought was, okay, he's he's calling out Usyk, but like they they just fucking fought. Of course he's not, or he's calling out AJ. That was the big one. That was like, you know, okay, uh, AJ just make something happen. Some with his growly. <laughs> what's wrong with him? Such but a he, meathead. He really is. <laughs> so, and, he, and then he's got like the camera right here or something, and it, and he's sweaty and like looking oh, coked out. Right. <laughs> and you know it's so weird bro i can't get into it at all it's funny suits, but it's like suits that he has like you know his face all in them or title belts or whatever man he's such a nutcase <laughs> he's he's just a weird guy and then but then he's calling out aj and it's like dude they just fought you know aj's already going through it like he had his post-fight tantrum himself like let him fucking calm down but that's probably why he was calling him out to get him all rat rattled and then he's saying oh, okay i guess we'll just fight you know uh uh mahmoud char and who's, I guess, some ranking mandatory or something like that, I guess. And so I was thinking, okay, what's what they're going to do is that they're floating Chisora, making them think, oh, he's going to go bottom of the barrel with Chisora again, but then he's going to go back to Char. And so then that way people would say, ah, well, at least it's not Derek Chisora again. But he didn't. I was surprised. I was like, oh, he's actually doing Derek Chisora. Oh shit! Sure, a better fighter than Char when it comes down to it. But like, yeah, well, I know, still, but that's mostly just, that's just really digging. That's just digging the ball. But just the on the basis of like, at least we'll see something relatively new because we already saw this and know that it ain't happening. Right. So what the fuck? But it's it's. But when you get pathetic, to a position dude. of power, I guess when you can pick your opponents, like Floyd picking Berto at the end of his long, you know, <laughs> <laughs> something like that. You're like when he first mentions that, and everyone laughs. Oh, he's not gonna fight Berto, and then you're like, wait a minute. <laughs> He's gonna fight. He actually is gonna fight Berto. Yeah, because that was the joke: is that you gotta <laughs> yeah. beat you gotta beat Andre Berto to get a shot at Floyd because it happened like five different times or something. And then so people were like, "All right, I guess we'll fight." Floyd's gonna fight Berto, and people were like, "Nah, oh shit, he really is." <laughs> oh man, fun times. But anyways, like that opens the door now because Usyk just said, "Well, I'm not here to play with Tyson Fury's games." Um, he was like, "Or should he?" More. Nor should he. He was like, you know what? I want to fight Wilder then. He was like, that's my next one. But he was like, that's the next option that makes me uh, I'm most enticed by. It. And Wilder said the same thing. He was like, I would love to fight Usyk. Is it a fight that could be easily made? I have no idea. It's, you know, the politics of boxing and everything the way it is. I'm inclined to think we'd see Wilder against um, Andy Ruiz before we see him against Usyk. Probably. Next. I'm fine with that too. Again, that would be That's a fun not fight. a bad fight. I'd take that fight. But um to see him fight Usyk that's the fight man that's just everything that we mentioned all you know that's that's there it is right there 
there's so many intangibles, so many things that can go on back and forth, all this type of shit. I would die to see that fight. Yeah, and and I would bet that Oleksandr Usyk also knows. I would imagine that he also knows that uh, that's a dangerous fight, that that's a fight where he would have to stay disciplined, where unlike AJ, you know, where he was able to kind of, uh, you know, uh, fend him off for kind of rounds at a time by doing one, you know, like a thing or two, because AJ just seems like it, he, he's like, it takes him a minute, you know, like he's, he doesn't do stuff as naturally. And that's not to say that Deontay Wilder is like some whiz in there. It's just that, like we've said, it just takes a punch or two and you got to stay disciplined. So it, it makes me wonder what he would do, but that would be a really fun fight and I'd be all for it. Look. And I think the bottom line is that Deontay Wilder's it's going to be a fun fight, pretty much whoever he fights. Um, There are going to be a lot of people. I used to be among those people who were constantly either doubting or talking shit. And it's not to say that I'm his biggest fan at this point. It's just that I'm, I'm obviously seeing uh, that a lot of the things I was criticizing, like they're the same things other people are criticizing. He's not very good, blah, blah, blah. It's like, they, they don't matter as much as I thought they did. And so he's going to be a fun fighter in fun fights, pretty much against anybody match him against just about anybody. And he, I think he's made it clear also that he doesn't intend to stick around like a ton more. Like he's probably at the tail end of his career, but that because of that, he wants, he wants some serious fights. Mm-hmm. He wants to make a dent. So I say, let the man make a motherfucking dent. <laughs> sure. It has man. He's dented a few heads already. So that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so, you know, I was, yeah. I was, uh, I worked one of his fights. I can't remember the opponent's name. Uh, it didn't end in the first round. It was, was that part? No, I don't know. I think it was in Atlantic City, actually, on on the undercard of a Hopkins fight. But um, yeah, same thing. Though. So I got to witness that power up close, man. And the way he just just thudded that that poor guy that just went down in heaps like the same Nikolai thing. Nikolai Furtha? Yes, that was it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was against uh, Hopkins Murad. Yeah, yeah, that's the fight I worked oh, out Oh, God. There. Where, where Steve Smoger, like, pushed Murad's head. That's right. Oh, God, man. that You know what? I haven't rem- I've not thought about that fight in years because there was nothing memorable going on with that. But That was so, yeah. That was such, like, the bizarre affair. Yeah. And then I've been up close with Wilder, too, because Wilder was in Montreal, I think, when or Quebec, one of the, wherever it was, Montreal, when um, Pascal fought... Uh, Pass Alpha Boutte or something like that. I don't know, one of those guys. And um, or or it might have been Kovalev. One, I don't know, there's someone out there, but like he was out there and no, uh, I you know, I met him in the lo- in the hotel lobby and I got a photo with him doing it. I only came up to like his his waist. <laughs> like he's a giant, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's fucking funny. Yeah, yeah. Just a big, big dude. And he's a really nice guy too, like a really personable guy. You know, he's made some questionable comments in the past, you know, about like saying how he wanted to catch a body and other things like that, but um you know let's we'll talk about that in a minute too with another yeah yeah totally but i mean like when it comes to like just that's boxing in general people make a lot of comments and you know who was us to say anything we're out there cheering on guys trying to like bash each other's skulls and all that other stuff too so it's kind of like whatever but um the end of the day wilder is back that's good for boxing and um it's good for us so i'm happy for it and it's good for the heavyweight division, dude. It's good. Yeah, it's uh, really good yeah. for that heavyweight division. It needs that boost because at the very top of it, Fury's going to hold on to the belt because every time he goes away and he thinks, okay, let me just chill out for a bit. And then he thinks then the attention goes away from him. And then he starts, you know, stamping like a toddler. Well, 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 I'm back again. No, 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 no. You got to beat me to win it. Then she just retire. Well, no, no, actually I didn't. Now I want to fight again. And then you got guys like Usyk who got his business done with Joshua, but is only looking for the ultimate big fights now. He's not looking to make mandatory defenses. And to his credit, he doesn't have to do that, man. He's at that level where he can say fuck the belts and do what he wants to do. So, um, and so is Wilder for that, for that matter, I guess. You know what I mean? But Wilder, I think he's more inclined to fight guys for a mandatory position because he's not champion. He wants to get back to that level. But at the same time, he's one of those elite guys that people do want to fight or don't if you don't want to get concussed. I don't know. But like, you know, I'm I'm not gonna lie, dude. <clears throat> I real I am really down for like seeing some fucking Usyk videos of him being like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hello, Deontay. 
you know, like fucking just some creepy. And Wilder, because Wilder, you know what? Wilder is just over as over the top as Usyk is. So those would be some really entertaining press conferences. And and Usyk never, I don't, at least I've never seen him talk shit. He even took fucking uh, Joshua's crazy rant after he kind of took it in stride like he was just standing there looking at him like that. that was about it yeah he was like yeah don't disrespect my flag buddy but otherwise he was kind of looking at him like great perfect yeah hmm. yeah he's just like Usyk's just a quirky guy that's more so than anything <laughs> he's a quirky guy and so is um yeah, that would be fun and so is wilder so i think they would actually get along and they clearly have respect for each other so i think it would be more so just funny i don't know whatever the fuck that yeah i don't ever remember wilder talking shit either for that matter like not like that so i mean no, nah, that would be, that would be uh, I think, a, a good promotion, good fight. Count me in for that shit, for sure. Yeah. But since we're on the subject of talking shit, that's been, I mean, <laughs> it hasn't been the only post-weekend discussion, but it, it's been up there, <clears throat> for sure. So, obviously, Deontay Wilder's knockout of Robert Hellenius, I mean, you described it earlier. He was on his, he wasn't even on his back foot. He was kind of not even on any foot. He was off balance. He wasn't set to punch at all. He was up against the ropes. He was moving backwards. He was in the, you know, he's in motion. Didn't even get extension whatsoever on the punch. And I guess just caught Hellenius right, which I think says a, a lot about Wilder's power, possibly a bit about Hellenius' chin too. But point is, it was massive and it was scary. And Hellenius had that, he had that look out on the canvas. So it was clearly a knockout of the year contender type of shit at the end of the year. It's going to be. And uh, then in the co-feature, Caleb Plant scored also a knockout of the year contender over Anthony Durrell. But, I mean, it, it was not a scintillating fight. I'm not going to lie to anybody. I don't think it was an I awful fight. I don't think it was an awful fight, but I don't think it was not super entertaining in terms of action. And there was a lot of sniping and complaining and, you know, fight, come on and fight type of shit. Like from both, from both of them, they were both like talking shit. It was, the a, it was an ugly clash of styles too, man. Yeah. It was like both guys mm -hmm. are not um, overly aggressive. Like exactly. Plants more, like more of a counter puncher and Durrell is to a, to their agree to, but he's mm -hmm. more like a come forward counter puncher. And, um, yeah, the, the way they would mix in, there was like a lot of mauling and like Darrell being dirty and trying to initiate like a dirty fight because Plant's the better boxer and Darrell's older. He did do a lot of dirty shit. Very dirty. Yeah, he, he was getting in there. He was trying to elbow. He was mauling around, trying to hit low, kill everything on the side. Plant was generally in end control, but like Darrell had his moments there too. He just wasn't landing as much and he wasn't throwing as much. Like yeah, Plant he is not frustrated. a guy Plant's not a guy who throws a lot of punches in general, all right? Like, he only throws... Yeah, he doesn't give you a lot, yeah. He doesn't, no. He kind of moves. He only throws 30. To, like, he's very low output. And Durrell was kind of low output, too, but he was just there following him. And you see just a lot of posture and a lot of... And then, then finally, Durrell would decide to, like, you know, leap in a little bit. Plant would catch him with a combination, and then they'd start, you know, mauling around. And it got boring and redundant after a few rounds of the shit. You're just kind of like, okay, well, you know, it's going to be the same thing over and over, and you got to get ready for a 12-rounder which most people I'm sure betted on if they, if they were betting for the fight or whatever it was. And all of a sudden, like you said, Pat, it just ended suddenly, you know, um, what round was it? Like round nine? Um, oh, man, I, I don't even remember, but I was starting to get a little weary at that point. Cause I was, was just like, yeah, it was just, you know, it was the same thing right. over and over and it wasn't getting any better. And, but plant, you know, who's yes, never been known as, the plants never been known as like mm -hmm. a big puncher. He's, you know, maybe a sharp puncher, because he's a, such a solid boxer, but not a not certainly not a one punch knockout artist. But that was a clean combination, man. That was perfectly executed. You can't say it any better than that. He threw a left hook to the body, which landed well, perfect. Just stepping Durrell a little bit, made him drop his arm, and then he came over the top with that left hook. That just pow, you know. And Durrell was gone, was completely cooked. You know, his legs out from under him, went down on his side, was paralyzed there for a moment, and just couldn't move. You know. And you yeah, can't get yeah. a prettier knockout than that, man. When you when someone gets a knockout like that, that's something that you hold with you, and you know you show family members for the rest of your life type deal. <laughs> and, um, yeah. And then it was the after the um, then came after the fight, and that's the one that made most of the you know the contention. Everyone like throwing a big hissy fit and shit because after the fight, immediately <laughs> Plant and there was, first off, it should be said there was a lot of bad blood between these two. Darrell was saying a lot of crap before the fight. I think he used the same cliched old line, I'll never lose to a white boy. Um, at least that's what Plant said. And um, he also, you know, made a bunch of other comments, said, I hate Caleb Plant for various reasons. He came up, he had, you know, 
he was he's spoiled he's this he's that yada 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 plant to his credit i don't want to say to his credit because he was talking a lot of shit too but he just said he was like oh i don't hate Darrell. he's like i don't hate anybody but i'm not, I'm not gonna take what he's saying you know they were just a yeah, lot he, of he was talking before. shit but in a kind of condescending way like yeah. he was like i'm above this piece of trash exactly, type of stuff. Exactly. you know it's like yeah, where yeah, you're yeah. like well you're kind of trashing him and saying that <laughs> but yeah there was there was obviously a lot of trash like they were, they were saying they were going back and forth about like you know you're my worst opponent you're this and that and i'm gonna blah 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 but like it was <laughs> yeah, you're was... saying all you fight is all you fight is bums and stuff like yeah, that and he's yeah, like yeah. well then i guess you're a bum yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's like so... i'm rubber you're glue type of shit you know <laughs> but so immediately after the fight though after playing scores and knockdown and you know he's still feeling really feisty as most of us would after just completely flatlining your opponent and one that's been that you've been pissed off with legitimately for a few months now um he 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 took he took matters into his own hands with a celebration and what he did was he did he did the shoveling technique you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah he went over whoop, whoop. i I, at least I can't I can't say where specifically it came from initially, but I recognized it as Tito Ortiz's old fucking celebration where he'd do that That's shit and then he'd go like this, like he's patting the ground after, you know, mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, the funny thing was like, I, I, I must have gotten up or I was doing something because I didn't see it initially. And then I sat back down and I was like, oh, what the hell's going on here? And they showed it on the replay. But the funniest shit to me was that like he goes to celebrate like he's digging a grave or some shit and the referee sails in like like quicker than he did to stop the motherfucking fight like he's this you see like out of the corner of the fucking screen the ref's like airborne like stallone and some shit like fucking cliffhanger like he's like grabbing him and so then caleb plant like pushes him off and goes to do it again and then the ref grabs him again and i'm just like and Whoa. I love that play and looked at, uh, I think it was, who was that, Harvey Doc that was doing that? I think so. Yeah, yeah he, he looked at him. He's like, over there, he's like, oh, no, 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 no. And then Caleb Plant, you know, he goes over and Plant pushes him away, goes over the referee's arms and does it again. Yeah. Doc doesn't stop him again. Plant slapped his hand away and walked over and did it one more time. Yeah, like, it's weird. <laughs> I mean, okay. And at that point, I found that. I mean, I don't care. I was like, whatever. I, it was. I was yeah, like, oh, and you you actually made it a bigger thing than it was by making all the fucking hubbub about it than just allowing him to do it and fucking get it over with, really. And now, on top of that, the reaction is also making it a bigger thing than it needs to be and really was when it was the knockout that was the focus, which makes this entire thing fucking ironic because we're sitting here fucking wanking about the massive knockout where the dude just got really fucked up and then going, whoa, don't mm. talk about it like that right after it happened, though. That's fucking weird, you guys. What? Come on, man. And it's not to say that because bad things happen in boxing or because illogical things happen in boxing, we can't complain about something. That's obviously not what we're saying. What we're saying is that in the whole, the knockout was the point. That's what we wanted to happen and that we tuned in to see, right? I mean, more or less. Yeah. And so why are we not allowing the fighter who did it to enjoy it in a way that's like not harming anybody it's strange and i guess the point is that from like a moral or ethical standpoint it doesn't make sense to focus in on that to that degree it makes it it doesn't make a lot of sense absolutely not and when you think about things in the past too we were talking about certain examples of fighters <laughs> just taking matters in their own hands and they looked upon very fondly today you know what i mean uh for example one of my all-time favorite fighters terrible terry norris he was terrible to his opponents and I'm not even like making a, you know, no pun intended or some shit. Like he was straight up terror. Not only if he knocked you down, he would run up and like punch you once or twice while you were clearly down and try to take your head off. After he knocked you out, there was a good chance he was going to run up in your face and start talking some shit afterwards too. He did it countless times. You know, guys who were helpless too. Like poor guys like Brett Lally, he had no business in the ring with Norris at the first place. Gets brutalized. Norris goes over and starts barking at him. Um, Ray Leonard? Yes, Poor Sugar Ray Leonard Remember comes out of shit. <laughs> yeah, man. I've never I've only Ray watched, was like, what? I've what only just happened? The highlights of this. And Norris is saying that Leonard is his hero and all that. That's how he treats his hero. But every time he drops him, he would literally run face up, was like, hit him Whoa, again. What? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, or when he did the poor uh the late Steve Littles, excuse me, after Littles gets knocked out, Norris runs up to him. Littles clearly had no idea where he's at, just glassy-eyed and wonky and norris comes up ah, ah, ah. i'm like bro relax <laughs> or 
my personal favorite, and I, you know, I posted that on Twitter today when you made a comment about um, Floyd Patterson and Ignamo Hansen. My personal favorite when Eric Morales knocked out boy Bobby Boy um, Velardez back in the early 2000s. Yep. And there was bad blood before that fight. Bobby Boy Velardez had fought um, Eric Morales's, you brought it up actually, Eric, Eric Morales's uh, younger brother, Diego. And was well, in a stupid thing, like, you know, in a fight that he was clearly dominating Morales, yeah. that is. He ends up getting a bullshit DQ because his corner came in, right? Yeah, like I think I think it was that his corner thought the fight was over and it yeah, wasn't yeah, yeah. and it wasn't quite over. Like they were allowing that to go after like a, a knockdown too many, basically. So they DQ'd Diego Morales. But then Velardes apparently had said something about it, according to Eric. But oh, Velardis okay. had like talked some shit about it, or is like, I'm gonna beat you like I beat your brother, and Morales was like <sighs> really because, fool it's so oh, yeah fucking... morales beat the hell out of him like brutalized and treated him like you know uh, he treated uh, him like trash he didn't even care absolutely. whooped his ass and then after he did it poor velardez is on the canvas sitting there just you know defeated and hurt and dr margaret goodman is over trying to like take care of him. morales walks literally right over him and no thank god harvey duck wasn't there because he probably would have tackled him. <laughs> morales from that right hey stop <laughs> um Morale, uh, morales sits over there and goes <laughs> poses over him with a smile <laughs> so wait, that is the most cruelest shit like that's the coldest thing you can do that's some cold-blooded shit right there i think that's a lot worse than what caleb plant did with the shoveling thing is standing over your opponent to pose for a photo with your arm flexing holding your title belt while your opponent is laying there with his head down and the yeah. doctor is like you know trying like to contemplating like, his existence and fucking... yeah and the poor doctor is over there like you know treating him like a child who just like got thrown off a swing and suffered a concussion <laughs> dude and actually it's funny too because uh when i when you said i brought up uh floyd patterson versus ingemar johansson so it's the the first time that a heavyweight champion has ever regained the championship, Floyd Patterson. So obviously he's pretty hyped because he got busted up by Johansson in the first fight. And, you know, he, a lot of people had doubted him. A lot of people had doubted him because uh, his trainer and manager, Customato, was protecting him and blah, blah, blah. And so, you know, it was actually worse than I'd remembered when I went to look at it after I said something. First of all, I was slightly off. He didn't really jump around the ring. Like, he didn't really leap around the ring. He started grabbing the ropes and going like this <laughs> at first. And then he walks over and he starts smacking Johansson on the fucking chest and face as he's uh, he he leans down, like gets down and goes like that to him as he he's to unconscious. Him I think he's trying to wake him up. It didn't look like it. It looked like he was hyped and going, fuck you, bitch, or something. I mean, I don't know what was said. All I know is It was a he, different time back then, bro. <laughs> it was, but I'm just saying that Floyd Patterson is, like, beloved, and nobody's ever remembering that shit or talking and about he, it. You know what I mean? Ever. I think that might, that's probably the one time out of his career because he never really jumped out of character so much. I mean, yeah, he had a lot of hatred for uh, Muhammad Ali before their first fight, but, like... You know, I never really heard Patterson really badmouth anybody or get like overly angry about anything. So that's that is that's pretty hilarious. I I just I just I didn't even uh it just crossed my mind and oh. I was like, oh shit. And then when I actually went to look at it, I was like, oh my god, that's actually a little worse than I remember. I thought he just the reason, why I, say, the reason why I say it's like a different error because with Johansson when he knocked out Eddie Machen, he knocks oh him out god. so vicious. Yeah, it's the most vicious knockout you'll ever see in one of the more surreal sights you'll ever see is that the referee continues counting after Machen's corner is already in the ring trying to pull his mouthpiece out to help him. Yeah, like, like they're him. like calling for a medic and he's sitting there like, and like and, holding and the a guy back still, and like and counting. It's like... still counting. Like, what the fuck, dude? It is wild. Yo, Hanson's already celebrating the other yeah, corner and the referee is still well, and, and, and even letting it go for that final knockdown yeah. was absolutely fucking lunatic, batshit yeah. insane. And then on top of that, he compounds it by like, he's like holding somebody back and administering. It's like, wow, wow. And Amazing. Machen was literally there as a corpse. Like, it was clearly out. It was wild. But... Yeah. Well, I mean, that's getting off the subject a little bit. Sorry. We do. We, we, we start going down the history rabbit hole and it just, it just happens. But no, dude, it, you know, I guess the overall point is that if you were to ask me, do I like it? No, it's not like that's not what I'm tuning in for. I don't really care so much about the celebrations and I'm not, you know, all I'm saying is that number one, it's understandable. 
he just scored a massive knockout in a fight that was emotional for him and meant something for him. So it shouldn't surprise anybody based on the nature of the sport and what's happening in there. And on top of that, like I said earlier, just it seems like the focus on that portion of it is a little stupid. It's it's kind of dumb. Not only I think that, that, man, especially with such a cringy post fight interview he had. <laughs> yeah, and the shirt, like I. Oh yeah. God, man! Why you? Just... Yeah, I think uh, Gray made a Gray made a funny comment. He said something about he felt he feels bad for the guy who had to like, screen print that. Out. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But like he had just such a ridiculously cornball interview that kind of reminded me of like Rocky Four. If I can change, you can change. Anybody can change. Some stupid shit like that. Like you say, I didn't lose to a white boy, but you know, it's not about color. Like, dude. So why nobody likes you? <laughs> yeah, I mean it, it's uh, you know, it was it was pretty cringy, dude. Overall, and and I guess the reaction to it's pretty weird, but. Nah, it was it was a massive, massive knockout. And I actually said this. Uh, so I, I caught that fight card at ppv.com. I was there in the live chat. It was a lot of fun, you know, like usual. Mm-hmm. And um, I had I had mentioned something because I even noted it there in the chat. I was like, dang, you know, that's two knockout of the year contenders on one card. And I mean, that's not the first time it's happened, but I'm trying to think of the most recent time it's happened. And the yeah. best I could come up with was 99 with... Uh, Derek Jefferson, Mo Harris, and Oleg Maskev versus Hasim Rachman in the first fight. You know, right next to me, right next to me. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good call, Lamp. But yeah, it was uh, the nice smoker got that chair dinged off. His head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> yes, Ow. Officer Smoger took a chair to the fucking head. Yeah. Um. I, well, I'm trying to think if it's happened since then, but I don't think it has. Has it? Um, I don't believe so. No, at least not that I can remember anyway. I, and I know it's happened a couple of other times, but yeah, she was pretty wild, dude. So just that one, uh, you know, the, the two main uh, or co-main event and main event knockouts, dude, pretty massive. The rest of the card. I mean, I'm not going to lie, dude. I was a little bit underwhelming overall in terms of action, even if the bunch of the undercard fights were pretty well matched, like we had said in the preview, but like, yeah, it was a it was left a little bit to be desired in terms of entertainment apart from those knockouts. So it was nice that the card ended with those knockouts because kind of needed it. Absolutely, man. Um, that's yeah, like you said, I think that's a really good comparison to the HBO card from the back in the past because when you get cards that are a little like they're you know they're dragging along, like the the, the plant fight card was the the, the uh, Wilder fight card was dragging along a little bit at first, you know the um the Rodriguez gary russell fight wasn't bad but it wasn't like super exciting either it was just more intriguing especially seeing rodriguez outbox uh, russell the way he was um the second fight which one was that the heavyweight fight was just ugh. you know what i mean frank sanchez against uh, negron yeah or, it was awkward and, it and awkward and it just yeah, yeah it just reminded me of a, like a, of a cedric kushner great uh heavyweight explosion card from back then well, from back in the day you know and sanchez was you know a lot's been expected out of him and he just looked kind of i mean he looked very he looked kind of in that fight yeah he, he looked kind of pedestrian yeah yeah against the guy that he should have been able to take out a lot quicker than that too man negron has been around the block for a long time and he clearly has a level to him that you should take him out if he's going to be any, if anything and sanchez went almost the distance with him before he not took him out I mean, it was a nice knockout at the end, but it took him forever to do it. That fight just slogged along, you know? So, yeah, you need those, man. And I remember, like, that fight, because the, the the plant fight took so long. And finally, when he got stopped, I was like, God, okay. And I'll cross my fingers. I'm like, wow, there's, you know what to do now. Take care of business, all right? I ain't trying. Like, I'm, I'm not trying to stay around till 1 a.m. working. And all of a sudden, right away, only landed three punches. Three punches. That's all he had to do. Bop, bop. Yep, that's all it takes, dude. That's all it fucking takes for sure. Yeah. So luckily it ended that way. It was unfortunate. You know, I think the name value alone, you know, uh, Gary Antonio Russell, like more was expected of him and he just kind of got beaten up, you know, over the distance. He got hurt quite, quite a bit too in that fight. It was a little surprising to see, but yeah. Anyway, it was the Russell brothers, man, because after their dad passed and you can see it's affected them and their performances, you know, Gary and uh, Gary Russell, the one that's been around the longest losing his belt recently and the this one happening now too and other stuff it's been a tough go for him yeah for sure yeah losing the patriarch and uh the person who seemed to kind of be the glue to their family is is definitely 
well, at least it seemed it seemed to have taken its toll. So I hope hope they're able to kind of get back to form and whatnot. Okay. I mean, yeah. Gary Russell, he's been around for a long time, and I'm not entirely sure how much more he's got in him. But he it looks almost like a from the look of the corner, it almost kind of looked like he's gonna be the one to kind of step into that role. That's what it seems like. I agree. So yep. if it is, that's great. But um we we cannot awesome onto the woman's yeah i was gonna say we cannot we cannot do a recap of this past weekend without talking about two actually in my opinion you know i don't know what tim bradley was talking about he's sitting there whining right as uh bomb gardener mayor was over i expected a more i thought that was a good fight i thought they were both good fights so i, I don't know what he was talking about because i thought that they were a lot both, of drama in both of them too man like mayor and bomb they're both perfectly entertaining i don't know what the yeah. problem was Especially for Mayor Bongarner, I think that that fight warranted why a woman should have three three minute rounds because that was a very closely contested fight. And all of those rounds, except for the early ones that Bongarner clearly won, in my opinion, were really as near the as, as it got the rounds got a little closer. It got you know it was really razor close in pickle, man. It was tough to really um, a minute would definitely, I think, an extra minute definitely probably would have helped a more decisive person for each of those rounds because it was really closely contested. And that's what we were hoping for. We both know that both of these women were just two of the, you know, top flight, comp, uh, two of the best in the world. Baumgartner just came on the scene recently, you know, with that dramatic knockout and the way she's been looking now. She's come leaps and above from where she was at. Mayor obviously has been in the spotlight since she's turned pro from the, you know, her Olympic pedigree. And she clearly had the skills to back it up and she's accomplished a lot. And so with all the trash talk before this fight and the big one, the back and forth and it was elite trash talk too. And it's pretty, you gotta, you gotta keep that in mind. Very elite. Yeah, it was pretty good. <laughs> um, yeah, and then, well, at least I'm not going to lie, dude. And I am biased, but at least from Baumgartner, because for a lot of the trash talk from mayor kind of just, I mean, dude, I thought at least you kind of nailed it. It seemed pretty Karen, oh, bro. Agree. Cause she was I just agree. whining. Yeah, yeah. Shut up. You need to shut up. But that's like, always, and that's always her persona. She's always kind of carried that with her. You know what I mean? That she feels <laughs> she carries herself to be like, well, I'm with top rank and yada, yada, yada. And I remember when she won the when she first won her title, and she was like, "Where's my belt? Where's my belt?" Ooh, ooh, ooh. Or when she or when Baumgartner knocked out Terry Harper, the first thing she does, they showed a a, a, a video of um Mayor, and she jumps up and she's like, and she goes, um, you see her start yelling, and I don't even know what she sounds like. Boomhauer from um from uh, what you call it, um, King of the Hill. King of the Hill. You know, oh, why you say my name? Oh, yeah, oh, 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 oh. Like, no one can, no one can say. Come what on, tell me about those championship belts, man. You know, come on, man. You, know, yeah, yeah. Of, man. But you know what interview you all know what I'm talking about, right? She's watching this. She jumps up. And yeah. Starts, like, yeah. And you're like, I have no idea what she said. She literally sounds like Boomhauer. But that's what started it. They started going back and forth. Bomb guy I'm going to dog walk you. Mayor saying you're going to do yeah. this. She and then seemed very threatened and bothered yeah. through much of the promotion, to be honest. Absolutely. Yeah, she's very pissed off about it. So they go back and forth, back and forth. Finally, um, you know, we're at that point, God, the fight's about to happen. We're at that, you know, the week, and then the queen dies. And all, you know, that card, yeah, yeah, such a card gets canceled. Everything falls apart with that. And we're like, fuck, we got to have a month now to wait before we can, you know, get the next one. And then, you know, the trash talking continues. And um, the fight, I think, lived up to it. Do I hope that, you know, like someone kind of got absolutely like maybe hurt and, you know, like a little bit more dramatic? Sure. But there was dramatic enough because the fight was so closely contested up until the very end. You know, Baumgartner was in control in the beginning. Mayor, remember we were texting each other. I thought that Mayor clearly was like kind of, I don't think, she, I think she underestimated her a little bit. And I think, and, you know, Baumgartner was quicker than her. She was, you know, more fluid and Mayor was having trouble, you know, trying to, trying to get adjusted to the style. To Mayor's credit, she did after like round four and stuff. She started adjusting and started timing her punches better and started landing some significant shots. Landed good body shots, was landing good right hands, using her jab well. And Baumgartner looked like she was slowing down a little bit too. You know, that the pace that she was setting and just the overall of it was starting to wear on her. And then Baumgartner got a second wind, you know. And as she did get a second wind, that's when it really got really closely contested near the end where it was like whoever you kind of preferred was it the cleaner shots of Baumgartner was it you know mayor whatever whatever you kind of liked and so Twitter was all over the place a lot of people said mayor they thought mayor won some a lot people, of people were heated about that shit too <laughs> that's why I understand because it wasn't a robbery that was not a robbery at all there was people prominent people I hate to say prominent because they shouldn't be but there's prominent people that are you know writers or whatever they're like that was a clear robbery mayor should have won it wasn't 
There was nothing robbery about it. If she had won by a point, I'm not going to go scream that Baumgartner got robbed. I thought Baumgartner deserved the decision, so I'm glad she won it, but there wasn't a robbery in the least, all right? You know, the fact that Mayor had a 97-93 scorecard was kind of more stupid than the card, two cards that went against her, so whatever. Yeah, and and I mean, the way that I saw it, and again, I, I'll admit my bias here, like I brought up on the preview, just because I'm, you know, I, I guess I've been more aware of Alicia Baumgartner for a little bit longer than the average fan. And so I've kind of, you know, feel like I am rooting for her. So that's a bias for sure. But at the same time, what I saw, bias and all, was that she seemed to be landing the cleaner punches the harder punches, at least through the first like three, three and a half rounds, uh, probably swept the first three rounds and, you know, was throwing in combination. Uh, Michaela Mayer, like you said, was having a really difficult time adjusting to what she was doing. She was kind of just walking into her punches for the first couple of rounds. But then she adjusted. She got her jab working much better. Uh, you know, she was actually connecting with the jab. She started connecting more solid as Baumgartner was slowing down and whatnot. And then in, I think it was round seven, Baumgartner rallied and had a really good round, busted her up, cut her over the eye, you know, uh, had her kind of like, not, I don't want to say hurt, but she looked like she got caught pretty good right before the bell and kind of like stood up real straight. Um, And then from my perspective, I did not think Michaela Mayer fought nearly as hard as she should have going into the last few rounds and if her according to her she said her corner had her up or said told her she was doing fine i disagree i think that she needed to up her uh you know up her activity i think she needed to really start stepping into her jab or something because she didn't really make much of an adjustment in the last few rounds and you know had she won that last round on i think it was two of the cards she would have won the fight and she did not so mm-hmm. the the fight that I saw is the decision that happened. I thought that Alicia Baumgartner deserved the decision, not a wide decision, but that she, you know, she, in the rounds that she won, she won them bigger. She landed the bigger punches. And she also controlled the fight in terms of power punching. And I didn't even know that, like, you know, before I saw, I knew that before I had seen the punch stats. <laughs> so I don't rely on the punch stats, just like we've talked about numerous times because of, you know, you work for CompuBox, but, you know, you don't rely on the punch stats, but you can use them as a tool. And Absolutely. so it almost, it felt as though they backed up what I had said. But again, people can always point the punch stats in any direction if they really want to. It's just that I felt that, was the fight that I saw. Agreed. Totally agree. Couldn't couldn't claim with anything with that. It was and what's interesting is that the post at, right after the fight, Mayor, you know, obviously mad that she lost the fight. Um Baumgartner tried looked like went up to him try to like, you know, at least say good fight or whatever. Mayor didn't want anything to do with it. You know, barely even acknowledged her. And then afterwards when they, when they interviewed Baumgartner, they're like, oh you're gonna give her a rematch. And she was like, hell no, I ain't giving her no rematch. She was like, I'm done with that. <laughs> She said, I want to go, I want to get unified and she wants to fight uh, the other champion now. Was it Choi? So yeah. um, it's, that's fine. I think, oh, no, I think they'll end up being a rematch. Yeah, probably. There's be too much money involved or whatever for it not to be. But um, again, man, with those two and just women's boxing in general, I, there's so many different ways that all of, all of them can go right now. And it's, and it's totally fine. Like you got Marin Baumgartner, they can, uh, Katie Taylor, Amanda Serrano, um, even McCaskill at welterweight, one of them can eventually go all the way up there to challenge. Like there's all these different avenues and different fighters for them to match up with. And um, yeah, I can't wait to see the future of it. I think Mayor and Baumgartner will have a rematch. Yeah, they'll probably meet, uh, you know, sooner rather than later. But it mm-hmm. sounds like um, Alicia Baumgartner has uh, some Korean ethnicity. And that oh. um, so the what is i believe the wbo or is it wbo yeah no 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 she just won wba wba WBA. yeah so the wba che the wba title holder she wants to fight her she talked about fighting her in south korea which would be pretty cool but then if she were then undisputed uh at 130 pounds then she was i i think that they could probably get some money together to do a mayor rematch but i mean I also don't really blame her. I'm not saying that I like it, but I don't blame her because it's kind of like how Bernard Hopkins did after the Felix Trinidad fight, dude, because he entered into Don King's tournament 
And, you know, a lot of us didn't really know this at the time, but he took the short money and was just like, fuck it, I'll do it for the opportunity mm -hmm. and took the short money knew the, the entire time that this was basically Trinidad's tournament. This was the whole thing was that they were trying to get Felix Trinidad in with Roy Jones and that if he won this middleweight tournament, they were going to skip super middleweight and go right to Roy Jones. That was the whole fucking point. You know, they were going to bank on this shit. And so Bernard Hopkins took short money took the abuse and yeah you know he threw down a puerto rican flag or two he almost got fucking killed for it but i'm not saying that's right either i'm just saying nonetheless point is that he was the underdog and he ate the shit to get the fight got the win and said fine we'll do the rematch if you reverse the terms on the contract and king said fuck no we're not doing that and trinidad said fuck no and so hopkins said that i'm walking yeah that's it Ooh. And I'm not yes, saying, again, I'm not saying I don't know if this was true or not, but the entry I heard a rumor that the Sugar Ray Robinson trophy that was supposed to be um that was supposed to be presented to the winner of the of the tournament had Felix Trinidad's had name engraved on it already. Yeah. yeah. It, according to Hopkins and according to I don't remember who it was. It was somebody who was, I don't know if it was Bowie Fisher or somebody, but somebody backed him up on that. I don't remember it being presented to him in the ring. Do you? No. Yeah, so. I mean, it, well, that was it was supposed to be a showcase for Trinidad, dude. I mean, it was in New York. It was, you know, anyway. So, yeah, I'm not I just remember telling everyone at school that Trinidad was going to get whooped. <laughs> they didn't want to believe me. And I got beat up for it yep. at the gym and at school because I was running my mouth about it. And then years later, I met Hopkins at the airport. We were like uh, for some for some show. And um, we were at the airport and he comes up and he was like, when we were leaving, I got, I got to take a photo with him. And I was like, listen, man, I was like, I almost got my ass kicked in high school because I told everybody you were going to beat Trinidad. And while he was walking away to his gate, he turns around and he gets excited. He goes, that's right. That's right. I told you this. Like, I'm glad you remember that, man. I'm glad you, he was like, I'm glad you believed in it. Like he started going in, you know? <laughs> man. Yeah. He's speaking of like kooks and I'm not even saying that I like that or that that's what should happen. I'm saying it's understandable, dude. You know, like, uh, Alicia Baumgartner feels slighted in the promotion. She feels as though Michaela Mayer was the one who was supposed to win that fight. She also felt that uh, Terry, um, uh, I, I can't remember her last name right now, but the chick that she stopped. She, yeah, yeah, Terry Harper, that she was supposed to have won that fight. She was the underdog in both fights. She wasn't yeah. supposed to come in there to win. She was being brought in to lose. And so I think that she feels slighted and feels like, all right, well, then if you're also not going to show me respect after the fight, even though I'm coming up to you, then fuck you. I don't blame her at all. I don't blame her one bit. And on top of that, dude, I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> Karen is not a racist term, you fucking mongrels. Number one, no, and I, I heard, I, there were a whole bunch of people trying to talk about that, you know, and after she called oh, her. I saw Karen. that too. They were like, we don't need to bring race into it. I'm like, what how is race being brought into it? Up. There's nothing just That's like shut a up. general term for anybody that acts like a but know. then she acted all Karen y after the fucking fight. Yeah. It wouldn't talk to her and was all fucking Meh. whatever, dude. That's what happens. So I mean, uh, but in terms of you know, quenching my thirst for some drama and and a good fight. It it did. Oh. I thought it was a good fight and that it 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 was fine as far as living up to the drama or whatever. It was good. I agree. I agree, man. I couldn't agree more with that. And what made, what made, me, uh, what made me laugh too, and I posted this on Twitter, when, McKe um, when um, sheesh, I just, Baumgartner, excuse me, when Baumgartner was uh, being interviewed in the post-fight interview, all the UK fans were booing the hell out of her. And I just posted something. I was like, they're still salty because she turned Terry Harper into a zombie. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Yeah, that was like a scary, like stopped on her feet, just like yeah, 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 frozen. Yeah. They're all they're all pissed off about that, apparently, you know. And um <laughs> not nah, good for her, dude. She could nobody could tell her shit. Good for her. Oh, she's the undisputed champion now. She's the ring champion, and she said that she was gonna do it. She went to people's backyards to do it. She came in as an underdog to do it, and she came new on the scene that no one was expecting that. Incredible. Yeah, dude, for sure. Good for fucking her. And you know yes. what? Also, gotta give it up whether you want to or not, you know, and a lot of people don't want to, a lot of people really don't want to and have never wanted to her entire career. You have to give it up to Clarissa Shields. Got to. Oh man. I mean, yeah. Give her all the, give her all the accolades there is. Again, she's a polarizing person sometimes with her personality. You, whether you like her or not, you can't deny the, her accomplishments. 
you know, um, two-time Olympic gold medalist, uh, been a pro as an undefeated unified world champion well, in two divisions now or three or something. Um, undisputed and now in the biggest fight of her career, ended up being the toughest fight of her career. She goes to her opponent's backyard, the only opponent to ever beat her, and she beats her convincingly. And yeah, you can't, can't say no better than that. Probably is the greatest woman fighter of all time at this point. You know, and, and it's, it's unfortunate, dude. I feel like she's like an artist, you know, like those artists that are not recognized during their time. Yeah. And eventually, eventually they're going to be like, what a great story this was. What an incredible story this was. And we need to tell it. And it sucks because it could be told now. It should be told now. And there should be more people willing to tell it. Uh, you know, she's a survivor. She is somebody who has come from a really low place and in a, a really dark place to where she is now. Mm -hmm. What I said immediately, first of all, her ring walk was great. Right as it was happening, I thought, you know, so many people did not want this to happen. So many people tried to make it not happen. You know, openly said, this is never going to happen for her. People, so, a, lot of, a lot of people in high places in boxing, and she made it happen anyway. She really did, man. She did it her way. I mean, she's, again, she's been very outspoken over the years about, you know, her mistreatment, I guess, and lack of opportunities and television, money, this whatever it may be. And um, some of the comments she's made are really funny, too. Like, some, like someone posted up, uh, remember one time she said that she could beat Rocky Fielding? <laughs> and, someone on, and then someone on Saturday said, I really do think she could beat Rocky Fielding. Like, she's... <laughs> <laughs> I calls him like I sees him, bro. She could I know, that made me laugh. I was like, probably, she probably would. <laughs> like, um, yeah, she just it's come a long way, and this wasn't an easy fight for her. Um, Savannah Marshall was clear. I thought early on when Shields came out, Shields put on the one on the put on a mess. That first round, she molly walked her ass. Like, yeah, I thought we might be in for a short night after that first round too, because Marshall isn't the hardest. You know, she's herky jerky, but. She's not difficult to hit in the sense either. Like she's not super fast on her feet and she has kind of, you know, weird footwork. So Shields was popping her early and takes, and like we said in the preview of the fight, it takes her a while to get adjusted. As the rounds go on, she gets stronger in the fight. So Shields came around at the back, man, you know, bah, 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 like she was hitting a double end bag or some shit. You know, you see Marshall, she was rocking exactly, you know, going around there. I'm yeah. like, oh snap, you know, Kralish was putting on, putting on a whooping. And she caught her good with a couple of those shots too. Like she sent the message. She did. And that was, a, that was a hard pace to keep up though. Even with just two minutes, it is a hard pace to keep up because Shields was throwing a lot and she was moving a lot too, because you can't stay stationary with a woman like Marshall because Marshall, even though she's not as fast as uh, Shields and she's not as fluid as her, stronger than her and bigger than her too. Just now just a big, big person. So um, as the rounds go on, as the rounds went on, Shields did slow down a little bit. And there were a couple of the middle rounds where Marshall, as I said, she gets stronger in the fight. And she started coming on a little bit. She started timing shields and she started landing some hard shots. And there were a couple of times shields got rocked. And I'm like, oh, well, you know, she wasn't overly hurt, but you saw her head snap back and she was moved and she visibly felt what was going on. And it was, you know, the, the fight tightened up a little bit at that point. But then shields to her credit came back and, you know, finished strong enough that she convincingly won that fight. There was no controversy or anything with it. I thought she won by about three parts, so. Yeah, not to, I guess I'm just trying to, you know, be honest or open or whatever, whoever it is who's calling the fight or commentating just because that's me. But I thought that the, ES, the ESPN crew had a really bad card on the commentating. Yeah, uh, you're not the only one who said that. There's a lot of people that felt that way. It was not an accurate call, in my opinion. At first with uh, Mayer and Baumgartner, where they seemed to have, have Mayer dominating rounds that I did not think that she dominated sure. whatsoever. And then on top of that, they seem to think that the Shields Marshall fight was a lot closer than, in my opinion, it, it should have been. Um, <clears throat> a lot of what was happening with Marshall, and I mean, <laughs> I feel like I'm like just preaching at people when I say it, but it's like, I don't, I don't think that it was really that difficult to see. Yeah, Marshall was getting in there and swatting away and shit like that, but a lot of those punches just were not landing clean whatsoever. And she was kind of cuffing with a lot of them. And then a lot of what Clarissa Shields was doing too was she was, and they had mentioned this once or twice. I think it was Andre Ward who mentioned it. Andre Ward was mostly quiet during the broadcast, but he, he seemed to be the only one talking sense that he said Clarissa Shields was doing a really good job of sticking very close to uh, Savannah Marshall, especially in the middle rounds. 
so that she couldn't get extension on her punches. And so she just was kind of cuffing her with a lot of shit. And sure, it looks good because she's like mauling her and, rah, you know, roughing her up. But Shields just had her gloves up and was just kind of riding with them. She didn't seem affected to me. I mean, she might have been getting hit hard, but she didn't, at least in those sequences, seem like much was happening to her. It wasn't until a couple rounds later when she started going to the ropes and then uh, Savannah Marshall was like taking a step back and then throw on the right hand that's when she seemed to actually be landing pretty good but again like you said shields she adjusted she clearly knew that she needed to move around a little bit more and kind of get a second wind or get her energy back to her and she did she did a really good job she clearly uh you know i, I was kind of concerned i thought that marshall was going to be a lot more successful on the cards and that they were going to be convinced because the crowd was really getting into it anytime marshall was getting close to shields you know the crowd Rah! you know totally, losing totally. That shit. but luckily the correct thing happened and Clarissa Shields without any sort of you know doubt whatsoever is not only the undisputed champion at uh, middleweight and but you know she defeated the only person who's ever beaten her I mean that's big dude I can't even imagine what that would feel like you know that's got to be massive yeah when you score the one, per, one the only person that's able to beat you as an amateur and you're able to score that win again and there's all sort of they were talking shit too you know like us Oh, that was very, very, uh, not so much. I mean, I think the, the mayor Baumgartner was more, um, yeah, 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 it was, was more entertaining, but oh, these two definitely had a lot of animosity. You know, <laughs> Shields was talking about how your record ain't nothing, all you did was beat me when I was like 16, and Marshall was going on talk, calling her pillow fists and saying how she's gonna knock her out and all this other crap. And I don't know what happened at the last press conference, they were like face to face, and Marshall said something funky, and Shields kind of, I don't know what they were talking about, but yeah, there, there was a lot of animosity, but after the fight. Shields at her credit went up to Marshall, shook her hand. You saw her. She said, you're the toughest opponent I ever had. You gave me a hell of a fight. Thank you for everything. You know, blah, blah, blah. and it seemed like Marshall kind of reciprocated and, you know, she looked disappointed, but whatever. It wasn't until like yesterday or so that of course it always happens. Just got to wait 24 hours to 48 hours before these fighters start up. Um, she was like, Oh, you know, I reviewed the fight. There's no way I lost. That is this and that. Oh, blah, blah, blah. I need to have, you know, all kinds of crap. And you're just like, oh, here we go. It wasn't as bad as Mayor having kind of a breakdown, but yeah. I I was cracking up because they did one of those, like, you know, turn the chair around backward, fucking talk at each other from two feet away things on uh on the I was like Sky Sports or whatever the fuck it was. And the entire time Clarissa Shields was like having difficulty understanding Marshall's accent. And at one sequence, Marshall was talking for like 30 seconds and they panned over to Shields and she was going. <laughs> <laughs> and she was just like, they had this confused look on her face. Like what the fuck is she saying? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was cracking me up, dude. Cause I mean like her accent isn't that bad, but it was it like in terms of, you know, being understandable from the average American, but it was just cracking me up. I mean, it is a little garbled. It's a little garbled, but it's not. Like, yeah. It is. Yeah, yeah, it is for sure. It's it's not the easiest, but it ain't the most difficult. But still, <laughs> it was just cracking me up. And uh, but but I do, like I said, we said it during the preview, dude. Uh, whether you want to or not, you got to give Clarissa Shields credit, not just for the win and for all that type of shit. But, dude, she went over there and she made it happen. She started hooting and hollering and getting in her face, making the fucking promotion. I mean, uh. Marshall's not really the type, you know, like she's kind of quiet. She's kind of, she'll talk shit, but like in a soft spoken way, yeah, you know, yeah, totally. and uh, Clarissa Shields was the one that was making those fucking social media moments where people are going, Oh, whoa, she's getting up in her face. This is out of car, out of control, you know, type of shit. And people were, you know, stupid, but she made that happen. She made, uh, she really drove a lot of the interest. And on top of that, if she weren't Clarissa Shields, if she weren't who she is, who the fuck would give about the fu- give a shit about the fight at all? So totally. that's the whole thing is that she and so I'm not trying to be like the biggest Clarissa Shields advocate or fan here. It's just that you know at some point you establishment schmucks have got to step up and say, all right, dude, she's done this because you guys didn't do it. You mm-hmm. sure as fuck stood in the way. So you have to give her some credit that she made all this happen for herself. And so hopefully she starts getting paid proper now. Certainly hope so, man. I mean, it's still going to be a tough road ahead of her. She's still in a limited division of herself, too. Like, she's after being it's marked, you know, it's where else is, where else is she really going to go at this point? Um, there, there's other fights, there's other things, but again, that's why we were talking about how she ventured off the MMA uh, recently, too, is because um, 
And she said she's going to go back. Yeah, absolutely. There, there's more money in MMA, I guess. You know what I mean? Like, it's just tough. I think relatively speaking, yeah. yeah. And it stinks because if she was around the same size or closer to, like, you know, Katie Taylor and the rest of them, she'd... My God, it would be the, the golden era. It already is a golden era down there, but I mean, imagine Shields in the mix with that too. But, you know, fortunately, she's like 15 pounds north of them. So, yeah. And I mean, I know that she's played some weight division games before, but I don't know how many more she can play because she does exactly. not look, she does not look like she's, you know, like soft or something like that. So, oh, so it, I mean, yeah, it's until I, I'm not going to say that I'm like super knowledgeable on who's in her division that she could fight. Cause I'm really not at this moment, but like, yeah, I just know it's kind of limited options for her. So. Yeah. It's, it's not a super stacked division. We've talked about that before. It's just that the higher in weight you go in women's boxing for the time being, um, you know, and Corey Erdman just wrote about this today. Well, what about, she fought Cruz before that was like in her first pro fight. I know they're friends and everything, but that could be something. Um, remember, you know, who I, who at one point I thought that would have been a good fight until we found out they were taking massive amounts of steroids. Was it um, her against Alejandra Jimenez? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? yeah dude jesus christ yeah yeah i mean um or whatever they were on i have no idea but like that i just know that she was that uh, jimenez was a heavyweight and then she moved down to fight uh to fight um the super middleweight and then she fought cruz and just looked ridiculously strong just pushing everybody like it was insane yeah dude <laughs> she looked pretty wild so i mean like it's not you know it, and it was one of those situations where like sometimes like James Tony is like testing positive and you're like, what? But, yeah, 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 <laughs> but then yeah, somebody yeah. else tests positive and you're like, I fucking knew it. <laughs> they were made of acne. So yeah, it's fucking, uh, but yeah, you know, there's, there's not a lot of options and that sucks. Um, but at the same time, whatever it is she chooses, she's clearly become a star. And so hopefully she gets paid. Um, but you know, Hey dude, Devin Haney had to go to Australia. Devin Haney, Devin Haney had to go all the way down under and listen to men at work at like seven different ring walks before they got to the main event, bro. Come on, men at work is all right, but chill out, Aussies. Come on. I can't, I'm not, Pat, I'm not, gonna, I'm not even going to lie to you. Besides laying down under, I couldn't name you one song they ever did. All right, so. Isn't it don't isn't men at work uh, who can it be now? Pretty sure that's oh, men at work. that is them. Okay, well, I'm this pretty is sure. <laughs> yep, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> No, well, and, well, okay. There's two songs. That's we're there topping out at two. I don't think we can go beyond that. If that is theirs, yeah, totally. But I know, yeah, I just know that sax likes That's so like classic late '80s, early '90s sound. Yep, dude. Jesus. Um, be knocking. I don't even want to do it because they're gonna pull. YouTube's gonna go. Nope, you're singing songs on your. Shit. <laughs> they got a copyright on us. Yeah. Yep. Fuck that. We don't own the rights to the song. YouTube, excuse us. Putting it out yeah. there right now. Right disclaimer. We do not own the rights to the song. Yeah, next thing we know, we're going to be, we're offending people with our Roy Jones takes. And then next thing we know, men at work are going to be coming after us about our boxing podcast. Yeah, because we're, you know, shittily singing their song. Sorry, guys. Or all the Aussies who love men at work are now going to be coming after us. But anyways, you know, I think to sum up, to sum up the Devin Haney fight, um, who's the dude that's that's super funny on on Twitter? Is that Rat, Rat Catcher? Rat Catcher. Yeah. He, he put up a, a really a funny, funny photo that kind of summed it all up. And it was from the Simpsons episode when Homer fought Dredrick Dred, uh, Tatum, the Mike Tyson opponent. <laughs> and the headline in the paper says, champ to wail on local man. <laughs> <laughs> Legitimate. <laughs> and basically, that's what happened when Haney went back to Australia. And this was a pointless rematch. We kind of talked about that in the last show that there was no reason for um. There was no reason for them to have this. Haney beat him so convincingly that there was no reason for me as but because in boxing, even no matter what, you can, you know, in certain terms, you can put in that note. Uh, yeah, they try to insert some variables in there. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, he, he wasn't ready for the something or broke his hand or, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, it's just so they put in the they put in the rematch clause. And even though Haney beat him almost 12 out of 12 the first fight, they had to go do it again. And you know, Cambosis, I guess. I didn't watch the fight because I said I was working the PBC show and I haven't even tried to go back to watch it because reading about it, it seems like it seems like I got enough out of it. But um it seems like Cambosis came out in the first round and tried, you know, tried to do his thing, try to be at least a little bit more aggressive, but immediately Haney was able to control him again, doing the same things he always does. He has great rudiments, man. He's just the fundamentals are beautiful on him. 
holds the positioning, the way he holds his hands up, you know, his, his footwork, his stance, and just his combinations, bro. He has an amazing jab that's very, very accurate. Um, he's not going to, like, take chances if not necessary. He's very content with just boxing you and just making you look bad while he does what he does. And he makes you fall into his style. And Kimbosis, his style is not made to handle a guy like Haney's. He can't keep up with him. He doesn't have the IQ to keep up with him. And he just overall, Haney's always going to be levels above him. So, um, yeah, that was just another beatdown. And apparently this one was even worse because Kimbosis was seeing the, how bloodied and beat up he was, man. There was that one round, Haney landed 34 punches and Kimbosis landed one. At that point, it could have been stopped, you know? I don't know why they it let was, it go. But... I think it was after round either nine or ten. And it was like, it, it should have been stopped. There's no reason yeah. to let it go another couple rounds. But yeah, Cambosos came out early. He he looked like he was going to make a more aggressive fight out of it. And I guess the, the two <laughs> notable things that happened, the first one was that they started showing an, an, an initiated clinch count. Yes, I saw that. I saw that thing. I never even heard of that. Have you? <laughs> but that means, but then, all right, just step back for a moment. That means that they have somebody working on this, that there's somebody literally paying attention. And then on top of that, they're phoning this to the production truck yeah, who made up a graphic, Before initiated this. clinch count. This seems like a big in particular. It, it seems like a misallocation of resources to me, but I could be wrong. I mean, to say the least, bro, this is about as bad as, do you remember when, I don't know if you remember that Showtime tried to use their, tried to use stats a lo- uh, years ago, like a decade or so ago. And we they weren't using CompuBox. They tried to use their own people, right? So as CompuBox and HBO, we had CompuBox and the HBO had Punch Zone, which was their own little separate thing that they created. We didn't create that. They decided to operate it, right? Showtime decides, well, we have our own punch tracker people. We need something separate that we can create too. And I don't know if you remember this, but they had the single stupidest thing I had ever seen in my life where they would, (laughs) they had a guy who, they had a thing where they were counting how many times people were like fighting in the corner or something like that and showing like a graphic, like where how many, you know, like whatever corner. It was like where where in the ring the fight was taking place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like they had a little ink thing so that it would be like, there's all the ink because that's where, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes. It it's just needless. And like on top of that, it's like it's it's over analysis. Like we don't need that. We don't need that stat. We can see just fine that there's a lot of clinches and it is annoying, but you know, a lot of and also on top of that. So yeah, the, that was the first thing. And that was kind of just like, "Guh, what?" And then the second thing was that a big reason for the clinches Number one is that Devin Haney is kind of like, you know, he that's part of his game sometimes. But also number two, Cambosos kept doing this thing where he was doing the like a boom, 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 like switching back and forth. Like yeah. he would he was doing this thing where he was like, there's Devin Haney over there, and he'd go boom and like swing toward him, you know, like switching stances, almost like remember how Dimitri Pirog knocked out Daniel Jacobs? Yes, yes. Like he kept trying to do that shit, and Haney was just like jab no jab like no like he just every single time and i don't even think that he would he wound up landing any southpaw punches he was just like it was the it was like he was trying to he was trying desperately over the first half or so of the fight to make something happen with that specific move and he wouldn't stop and it wasn't working and he was just getting his ass kicked and so i mean it it's it's a bad style for cambosos like haney's that is and he just got beaten up he got beaten up and he had nothing almost the entire fight. So it's uh, it, it was everybody who said it was bad idea to take the rematch was correct because it did not help Cambosos like in terms of public perception. It's not going to help him get any fights. I don't think. Uh, the only thing that it really did, I think, both of the fights showed that there's a, a good amount of enthusiasm for pro boxing in Australia right now, and that's great. But for Cambosos specifically, it was not helpful. Nah, man. I don't know really. I mean, he still fits into the lightweight division, I guess. People use his name sure. as a name, and there's fights that he can make that would probably be better. But like, I think you know, him and Ryan Garcia would make for a good fight, for example. Him and Tank would probably make for a fun fight as well. But um, yeah, against a guy that. like 
Haney or a guy like Shakur yeah. Stevenson? Nah, not He's at all. kind of like yeah. a natural counterpuncher, kind of a sneaky counterpuncher yeah. who's like who likes to get wily. But yeah. then if you put him in against another counterpuncher like Haney, who's like a really patient counterpuncher, that's not a good fight, dude. It's not a good style matchup. And so, yeah, you got to give him like a different style. Like some people would bring it up, uh, Isak Cruz. I mean, he's he has a fun style against pretty much anybody, but they would probably make for a fun kite fight because he would he would make Cambosos fight, you know, and that would Absolutely. be probably a bruising type of thing. But I, hey, that, I said before too, I'd love to see a guy like Cruz going there against um, Haney or um, or uh, too. Um, Shakur. Because, you know, with Shakur's stats, oh, he's the lowest percentage uh, guy to be touched in boxing. He's this and that, all of, you know, all of his, uh, all of his yeah. things. You can Put tell him against him. somebody who knows. Yeah, that's someone that's going to rough him up because he still hasn't been in there with someone like that. And remember when his last fight, anytime, uh, who did he fight? A Consacio. Was it, right? Um, yeah, Consacio, yeah. Yeah, he, remember, he was like complaining about everything throughout that fight. All the yep. time, for the ref, all the <laughs> stuff, so. Oh, yeah, he was really whiny during that fight. Yeah. So I wonder how, you know, even though with all of his skills and like that, I'd love to see him in again with a guy like Pitbull. I agree. Who will definitely have his chest up in there. Is not going to be worried about taking a few punches to get in there or trying to look really good to get the perfect punch. He's just going to be throwing on your ass and seeing how uncomfortable he can make him. Because, you know, we already know Shakur is going to be moving up to 135 soon. Haney, on the other hand, looked awful at the way oh, yeah. he looked like an absolute skeleton. So I'm not even he sure if like he's still going to be around anymore, man. He has to move up. Yeah, Cambosos didn't look perfect either, but he looked better oh, than Haney. Oh, no, but I mean, Haney was like just stunned. He's like, sorry. When you can see around their eyeballs, yeah, like not, and I'm talking about like their like ocular cavity. Like exactly. When you can, and they're all like sunken in, like that's not good. It's really bad. Yeah, a whole cheeks to everything, his face. He looked ashy. You know, yeah, let's, he looked bad. It's really yes. good. And so... you, can't, you can't let guys like that, you know, I think back to like, remember when Brandon Rios used to boil down to 135 oh, and he actually, he actually collapsed, I think, one time? Dude, I was, it's, sorry, but actually that, okay. that reminds me, I, w I went to uh, then the Home Depot Center for the Urbano Antillon fight because they had yes. some beef from like the gym and shit like that. And anyway, before the fights, before the fight card even started, we went to Chili's in Carson and mm -hmm. Brandon Rios walked in and I went up and I was like, and I just wanted to say hi. Like I'm not, you know, I didn't yeah. want a fanboy. I was just wanted to shake his hand. That was it. And he looked at me like I was some sort of fucking alien. He looked so out of it. He was just like, Oh man, he yeah. looked like shit. And and they took him over to the corner and they're like, Yeah, we need to get something to eat like mm -hmm. right now. And so they went and they ate. And I was just like, Whoa, he looks like hell. But I mean, mm -hmm. he wound up, I think, scoring like a third round or something. He did, yeah, that, it was but... a fun that was a fun fight. But that was, yeah, it was time. It all was... those fights, he looked like absolute death before the win. Yeah, he looked so um, bad. Castillo collapsing before he fought uh Corrales on the scale, right? And that fight had to get canceled, like you know. Yeah, they well the and then they uh, his cornerman tried to pull the shenanigans for the rematch. Remember, he tried to stick his foot in the scale. Yeah, yeah, to, yeah. And then he weighed in heavy, and they almost canceled the fight. But then Corrales went through with it and got knocked out to fucking yep. shit. And then they tried to do the third fight, and I knew a bunch of people that went to Vegas and were there. And at the weigh in, they canceled it. Like, fuck, that would suck. But I mean, yeah, dude, Haney looked like shit. So I can't imagine he's going to be sticking at one thirty five too long. Maybe the circumstances for the fight were different. I don't know, but mm -hmm. he looked like shit, dude. Anyway, uh, the rest of that card was was not. It was nothing to write home about. Unfortunately, the Maloneys were about as notable uh, about as notable as it got on the card for the most part. Um, but they were not particularly entertaining fights. Unfortunately, it was that was the crowning moment was Devin Haney well, whooping up on Cambo. I think another well another another thing to think about too is that um even though he didn't had nothing to do with either of these cards that night. Think about how special, uh, I just something I want to mention, think about how special the monster is, Naoya, in a way, because two of his opponents fought that night and both of them looked good. And like Emmanuel Rodriguez looked really good against um, Gary, uh, Gary Ant Antoine Russell, Antoine That's Russell. True. And I didn't watch the Maloney fight, but I know he won. And it's like, think about how easily, in a way, just to cap it, to just beat the shit out of both of them. Like they were just nothing, you know what I mean? So... I just want to make a point like like just crazy shit. And want to just kind of it it just makes it makes you remember how criminal it is 
that like I'm no blame because I don't know what the fuck's going on. All I know is that it was what like two two and a half years ago that Top Rank was talking about they're bringing the monster to the U.S. and they did, oh, yeah. and then it's like been absolute fucking crickets ever since. So which is like the guy's in his prime for sure. He's just an he's a fucking beast. He's a kraken. He's a total gorgon motherfucker. And we're not even seeing him fight. Sucks. Just it sucks. But yeah, it is, it is, I guess what it is. Hopefully we'll see him in there. Well, we know we will see him in there soon. He just fucking announced a fight not too long ago, but regardless, um, no, nah, dude, it was a big weekend for boxing. It was a fun weekend for boxing. Uh, there's a lot of shit jammed in there, man. So I'm happy that we got to experience it. This is probably going to lay low again for a couple of weeks, but we'll be back well, for sure. Yeah. I mean, that's the next week. I don't know what's coming this upcoming week. I don't I think it's kind of be quiet. And then the 29th, I know, is, is going to be busy again with some shows. So, well, we got the Anderson Silver fight, right? I think it was on 29th. Anderson Silver, Jake Paul. <laughs> I mean, and obviously, I'm not going to be touting that as the pinnacle of boxing achievement. But, no, in, term, but in terms of being competitive, people might be surprised. I mean, it definitely might be an interesting fight, too, whatever. People might be so, surprised. Yeah. No, nah, it's, uh, yeah, there's, there's uh, some stuff happening in a few weeks. But this next coming week, I don't think there's much, which means that we're going to the shed with the history of this week. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's what we're doing. Hey, dude, I appreciate it, though, man, because I know you had to work the long-ass card. You already had to do your research for the other cards that happened and shit, dude. But it was a fun weekend, and uh, it's good to appreciate the shit with you, man. Absolutely, man. Always a pleasure, and can't wait to uh, we get to the history stuff this week. Because we have a lot of good stuff planned out, so. Yeah, dude, we will definitely be back with the history. In the meanwhile, though, if you listened in, to the knuckles and gloves podcast via podcast app thank you and if you'd subscribe and leave a comment we would appreciate that leave a rating also if you watch the knuckles and gloves podcast on youtube thank you as well and subscribe leave a comment we'll get back to you as much and as soon as we can but as far as social media goes the knuckles and gloves podcast is on both facebook and instagram but it's also on twitter and that's where we are probably spending a little bit more of our time in terms of boxing social media Eris is on Twitter as Punch Zone Eris. Me, I'm there as Patrick M. Connor. So say hello. We'll say hi back. Eris, talk soon, bro. Have a good one.